Hey everybody, I'm Chris Howard and this is Top of Mind. Welcome. I spent a week recently on the road with a mix of different types of people, including providers of solutions and a lot of clients and some Gartner alumni. Really great to get out of this office and talk to people and find out what they're doing. And of course, regardless of topic that we would start on, it would always drift back to artificial intelligence. Uh, and it was a whole range from breathless enthusiasm all the way to dystopian headlines. Uh, and I often get asked the question personally, so where do I fall? Like, where am I in that spectrum? And by extension, where does Gartner fall? And the truth is that we're somewhere in the middle. And if you are in, if you're in Gartner, you can find people that represent kind of both sides of that argument and everything in between. But it's really my responsibility to provide clarity where I can and realism where I can. But after the week, it really did leave me with some doubts that I'll get to in, in just a minute here. But they're doubts that reflect the hype cycle that I talked about a couple of episodes ago, where you're in the midst of all of this hype, and then as you start to understand things more, it starts to turn into questions and doubt. And that's all like super healthy. So that's where I want to start. I was reading recently that when the brain receives some kind of an external shock, like something surprising in the environment, that shot of adrenaline that happens actually causes two things. One is fear, the other is creativity. And interestingly, within the brain, the biosignature of both of those things is exactly the same. Uh, so take artificial intelligence and all of its newsworthiness right now and the appearance of great potential seeming like, like magic. The brain, the collective brain, is, is causing both of those reactions. It's causing a bit of fear, but it's also causing this burst of creativity. Now, what I want you to think about is some experience in your life where you perceive something as being magical or extra special or impossible, and how you reacted to that. Let me give you an example. So you can tell that I'm a musician, and ages ago, like back in a different life, this recording here by Keith Jarrett, uh, was became one of the most popular jazz sound and jazz albums of all time. So the way that Keith worked was that he would come out on stage without any preconceived ideas of what he was going to do and play for like 45 minutes. And you get this interweaving of themes and harmonies and this very creative burst of stuff. And so, of course, this was amazing to me that somebody could do this. And it was something that I wanted to figure out how to do for myself. And then about 15 years or 20 years after Keith made that recording, somebody went through the effort of transcribing that music, and you see it behind me here. And it's all written out, all the notes are there, and I had this really odd experience, is that once I started to learn it, some of the magic of that original experience went away, because I started to see the mechanics of how it worked and what he was actually doing, and then I could recreate that myself. And it went from this sort of magical experience to just a lot of work. <laughs> Very fulfilling, ultimately, in the end. But the same kind of thing is happening with technologies all the time. And so what I've done as I was countering my own doubt about artificial intelligence is I started to go back in and read about, well, how is it made? How does it work? What are the things that people do? And then all of a sudden, I find myself immersed into data techniques, into things like graph databases and vector databases that actually are the guts of what seems to be magic within artificial intelligence. In its essence, and it's more complicated than I have time to go into here today, these data technologies and techniques actually study the relationship between objects and the strength of those relationships leading to better probability and better prediction. That's why something like ChatGPT is able to predict combinations of words, because in its trillions of parameters that it's studying, it's actually looking at the strength of connections between adjacent things. Let me come back to this question of doubt that I started with. Doubt is actually a mechanic of the hype cycle, which I've also talked about. And many of you have commented on how quickly this hype cycle seems to be moving, the fact that disillusionment is coming more quickly than it does with other technologies, perhaps. But here's what I think is, is actually happening. I've had this conversation with some colleagues of mine where there are actually multiple hype cycles happening at the same time as new things get introduced into this thing called generative AI. And so you slide back down that slope, you start the hype again and again. But what comes with that is sort of a constant questioning of what is this? Is it real? Will it work? Should I be scared? All of these types of things, which are part of the disillusionment phase, actually are concomitant with the hype cycle itself, with the beginning of the hype cycle. 
And one of the things that I've been thinking about is sort of my own position, my own doubts about this technology and the way that I've approached it, as I've described to you, which is to kind of tear it apart and figure out how it works and remove some of the mystery of it. As I was thinking about doubt, I was reminded of this little book called The Meaning of It All, which is transcriptions of lectures that Richard Feynman gave at the University of Washington, Seattle. And in the book, at the end of the first chapter, he talks about doubt as a, as a natural part of the scientific process and a really important part. And paraphrasing, he says, the doubt is not to be feared because it tells you that you haven't figured it all out yet and that more work is required. That's very much where we are with AI and other technologies, too, is the healthy doubt that makes us say, well, what if hallucinations keep us from making this a useful technology? Or what if bias can't be countered? Or what if it makes decisions that it can't defend? And so on and so on. These are the natural kinds of doubts that are coming with AI. What that's doing, though, is actually making us work harder to solve those types of problems. That is the power of doubt in these situations. Doubt leads to questions, and questions lead to more knowledge, and knowledge leads to greater discovery. I'm Chris Howard. This has been Top of Mind. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.